In this video, we're going to be talking about equivalent ratios. So in our previous video, we talked about proportions, all right? And proportions are made up of ratios that are equal. So we said if two ratios are equal, which is kind of another word for equivalent, then they form a proportion. So I'm just going to write equivalent here to you because we kind of use these interchangeably. So if they're equivalent, then they form a proportion. And, um, and if that's true, then there are several things that are also true if they make a proportion. If they do make a proportion, then they're cross products. So that's when you multiply diagonally across the proportion. Then their cross products will be equal. They will also have the same unit rate. Okay, so remember uno rate for uno rate or for unit rate, and then they will they could also be multiplied or divided to produce equal fractions. All right, so really what you're going to be doing in this section is trying to determine if two ratios make a proportion or if they're equivalent. Because if they are, then they are a proportion. So it's kind of a yes or no type question: Is this a proportion or is it not? And I'm going to show you the three ways that you can use to do that. Now, the last way I'm going to show you is probably the easiest, more straightforward way, but some people like to use these other two ways. The problem with them is they don't work every single time, and so that's why a lot of people like the third way. But I'm going to at least let you see it, so in case that's something um, maybe you've done before or you're wondering if that would work, um, you'll know. All right, so it says to multiply or divide to make equal fractions. We also call this scaling, and we'll talk about that later. Um, if not this year, then um, again in seventh grade, you'll talk about scale factor. All right, so what I want to know is can what do I do to make 15 into 3 or 5 into 1? Right? Is there a number I can multiply or divide by in order to do that? So, well, if I divide 15 by 5, it becomes 3. If I divide 5 by that same number, if I divide 5 by 5, do I get 1? Well, yes, I do. So if you can multiply or divide by the same number and you get this ratio over here, so if you start with one ratio, multiply or divide by the same number, and you get the second ratio, then that means this is an equivalent fraction. So we would, usually they say determine if it makes a, a proportion or not. So I would say yes. Okay, it's a proportion. All right, so let's look at the second example. What I want to know is how do I get from 2 to 12 and 3 to 18? Is there a number that takes me to 12? Well, I could divide to get to 12, but I could multiply to get to 12. If I multiply by 6, then I get 12. So if I multiply down here by 6, 3 times 6, do I also get 18? Yes. So since I multiplied them both by the same number, then I would say yes, this is a proportion. And by proportion, I mean they're equivalent. Okay, they're equal. All right, find the unit rate using Tybo to divide. So another way to test to see if something is a proportion is to find their unit rate, see if they're both the same. So remember, I'm dividing. So if I divide 21 by 3, top end by amount, 3 will go into 21 seven times. So the unit rate for this fraction is 7. If I do the same thing over here, 8 into 24, then I also, then I get 8 divided by, or 24 divided by 8 is 3. So did these have the same unit rate? No, for this one I got 7, and for this one I got 3. That's not the same. So this is not a proportion. They're not equal. They're not equivalent. They don't simplify to the same thing. So I would say not a proportion. And if you had to give a reason why, you could say different unit rates. All right, for number four, I'm looking at their unit rates for this one. Now there may be, there's always more than one way to do a problem, so you may be looking at it and figuring out another way, but for this case, I'm just trying to show you what a unit, how to use a unit rate, so that's the way I'm going to solve it. So to do that, I do top end, bottom out, so I'm dividing, four going to 16, four times, and then on this side, I'm using nine and 36, so 9 will go into 36 four times. Since I got the same unit rate for both of them, then this is equal. So yes, it's a proportion. All 
All right, take a look at the third one. So this is probably the way that most people um, test proportions because it works every time and it's easy to do. So um, if I'm testing their cross products, then what I'm doing is I'm multiplying diagonally and I wanna see if I get the same number. So if I multiply 78 times two, I get eight times two is 16, carry your one. Seven times two is 14, plus one is 15. I get 156 going this direction. What will I get if I multiply 25 times three? Three times five is 15, carry your one. Three times two is six, plus one is seven. All right, so their cross products, this needs to be the same number if this is a proportion, and this is not the same number, okay? They're very different. So these are not equal, they're not equivalent, it's not a proportion. So I could say not a proportion. And again, if you have to give a reason why, this time I could say it's not a proportion because they have different cross products. And when I tried multiplying, I got a different product. Number six, I have 36 inches of snow in eight months to 27 inches of snow in six months. So this is just written out rather than in um, the fraction form we're used to seeing. So I'm just going to rewrite it first. So 36 inches in eight months. And if you want to, you can set up your word ratio first just to make sure you get it right. So inches and months. I can do my boxes, set up my proportion. All right, so 36 inches goes on top, eight months goes on bottom. 27 inches goes on top, six months goes on bottom. All right, and this time I'm not solving, I'm testing to see if it's a proportion. All right, so I'm gonna multiply diagonally in both directions. 27 times eight, eight times seven is 56, carry your five. Eight times two is 16, plus five is 21, so 216. Then I need to multiply this one, 36 times six. Six times six is 36, carry your three. Six times three is 18, plus three is 21. All right, so I did get the same cross product, 216, 216 are both the same number. So I would say yes, it's a proportion. And if I had to give the reason why, I could say because they have the same cross product. All right, number seven. And um, this one again is not written out for me, so I'm gonna start by doing it myself. I've got dollars on top, dollars, $4 for 20 donut holes and $7 for 49 do donut holes. So I've got dollars compared to donut holes. I'm gonna set up my boxes. So $4, 20 do donut holes. And then I've got $7, so that's on top, and 49 donut holes. I'm testing to see if they make your proportion, so I'm gonna multiply diagonally. Now, you could use a different way if you want to to see if it works, but again, this way always works, so sometimes people just skip to it. So if I multiply 49 times four, I get 36, carry your three. Four times four is 16, plus three is 19. And then I'm gonna multiply 20 times seven as well. 0 times 7 is 0. 7 times 2 is 14. All right, so did we end up with the same number? No, we did not. So this is not a proportion. These are not equivalent ratios. And so I would say not a proportion. And what would be the reason for that? Well, we would say different cross products. In the last example, this one's already set up for me. It works the same if you have a decimal. Um, again, I like cross products, so that's typically the one I would use to decide if this made a proportion. So I'm gonna multiply diagonally one way, diagonally the other. Five times seven is 35. Then I need to multiply 2.5 times 14. So four times five is 20, carry your two. Four times two is eight, plus two is 10. Start with a zero, that second row. One times five is five, one times two is two. When I add these up, I get zero, five, and three. But don't forget, I had a decimal right here in my problem. So if I have one decimal place here, then my answer also has to have one decimal place here, so I'm gonna move that over. 
So is 35 and 35.0 the same thing? Well, yeah, it is, okay, because I don't have to have the point zero. These are both equal to 35. So is it a proportion? Yes, it's a proportion. And if you had to tell someone, well, how do you know it's a proportion? You could say, well, they have the same cross product. Proportions always have the same cross product. All right, so that's it. So again, there were three ways to test to see if something made a proportion, if two ratios formed a proportion. One way was just as, uh, what we call scaling. That's um, can you find a number that divides both the first, the ratio, the first ratio, if you divide it by the same number, do you get the second ratio? If yes, it's a proportion, okay? If not, it's not a proportion. Or the second way we looked at was unit rates. If you find the unit rate for both ratios and they end up being the same number, then it would be a proportion. If not, then it's not. And then the last way, um, and the way my probably my preference, is to test their cross products. So diagonal, um, if you multiply diagonally both directions and you end up with the same product, then you're going to have a proportion. If you get a different number, it's not a proportion. All right, see you later.